Ah, and Alan Crew, welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, yesterday, after I did the video on fitting the new carb rubbers and clamps to the uh, the intake side of the engine. I thought, well, I've got about an hour and a half free. Let's crack out the uh, the electronic carburetor synchronizer that I got sent from Raytech over in Australia uh, about a year ago. They sent me it. It's been sat in the drawer. I thought I'll have a quick read through, see what's involved because I've never used an electronic one before. Only used the old Mercury type. And I thought, well, we'll put some fresh fuel in the little remote fuel tank that I made and get the bike fired up because it has been parked up for quite a while and I was a bit concerned that maybe uh, the carbs had started to corrode a little bit in the float balls, the jets were blocked up and that kind of thing so I'd have to redo that all over again off camera. Uh, it started up, it was okay, it was a bit reluctant, it took a while to get to fire up to be honest, certainly not an acceptable fire up for a parked bike uh, if it was in daily use that's for sure. Uh, and one of the customer complaints with this particular vehicle right at the start was very poor starting. So I need to make sure when it goes back, it starts on the button. Uh, yeah, solve the problem, Andy. That's what it's all about. Uh, so I ran the fresh fuel through, put, probably put a couple of litres of fuel through it yesterday. It's pretty thirsty, in all honesty. No, I get through the fuel pretty quick. Um, but it's cold start now. I want to fire the bike up again this morning to make sure that it does start well. Uh, and then I can get it warmed up and then we can do the carb balance on the bike. And then that's the last big job done. Uh, I've just got some hoses to change at the, on the front brake. I've got a new clutch cable to fit and a, a, a range of little bits and pieces to bolt onto the bike. But all, all sort of, you know, small stuff that doesn't really take very long. So hopefully, as long as the carb balance doesn't highlight any particular issues, uh, this bike should hit the deadline of being ready uh, to take back to Auckland first thing Thursday morning. Fingers crossed. Okay, let's get it fired up. Hopefully, hopefully it'll start on the button. Here we go. Right, ignition is on. Choke is about halfway. straight up so that's great news uh, the choke is now fully off it's just warming up I'm gonna have to open up some doors let some fresh air in otherwise I'll die which is really bad all the fumes and stuff it's really bad for your brain so I'll get that done and once the bike's nice and warm uh, we'll take a look in the I think we'll need to look in the Honda manual as we go out the car synchronization rather than in the Raytex stuff but we'll look at both uh, and then we'll go up with a plan and then we'll get it done. Here we go. Use. Coolio, bikes all warmed up. So let's take a look in the Honda manual. And if I remember rightly, the K2 is a supplement to the original manual because it's got different carbs. Let's take a look at that, see what Honda have to say. Then we'll look at the Raytech stuff. And then, uh, well, we'll go from there. Okay, we're in the uh, supplementary manual that covers K1 to K4 models of the CB750. Page 194, carburetor synchronization. So it goes on to say to remove the tank, well we've done that, we're using a remote fuel tank anyway. Uh, remove the each of the boots from the top of the carbs where the link rods go on, so we'll do that. Uh, I think actually I've already pulled those back to be fair. Uh, and then connect up the vacuum gauge um, outlets. These are special little screw-in 
uh, brass pieces which go into the uh, the carburetor and a particular point and you'll see that on the on the bike when we get there uh, which allows us to tap into the vacuum uh, and it's actually I think I think it's that one there going by the drawing it's not very well drawn because the screw isn't flush the screw actually is a pan head but anyway not to worry um, so we can do that now <clears throat> going it goes on to say and this is the important bit here so there's your diagram. So it says start the engine and loosen the adjuster screw lock nut. So that's number two on there. Uh, so that the, uh, sorry, start the engine, loosen the adjuster screw lock nut and turn the adjuster screws so that the vacuum gauges connect to the carburetor as all indicate uniformly. There's some bad English going on because actually what it should say is turn the adjuster nut which will be three adjust a screw it says there but it's not it's actually a nut and as you rotate that nut it lifts or drops the rod which is connected to the throttle slide so bad english it's a nut okay um now the the aim of the game is to have all four carbs somewhere within three cm hg um, and also between all of them within the range 16 to 24 cmhg now the device that we have let me go and get it for you hang on even without moving the camera how's this right so this is what we're going to be using and the scale on this is millimeters hg not centimeters hg hg so we'll be timesing that re reading there by 10 so they need to be between 160 and 240 millimeters HG overall for all four carbs. And then the variance allowed between the carbs is going to be 30 millimeters HG. Wow, interesting stuff. Okay. Okay, so it also says turning the adjuster nut. <laughs> Here we go. Turn the adjuster nut in the clockwise direction will raise the vacuum pressure. So as you turn it clockwise, it's going to raise the rod that doesn't make any sense turning the adjuster screw in the clockwise direction and it's got a right hand thread on it so we turn that clockwise that's going to raise the rod up it's going to raise the throttle slider up you would expect the vacuum pressure to drop downstream of the throttle hmm turn the screw in the counterclockwise direction d -d 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 rod drops down throttle closes it'll lower the vacuum pressure that doesn't make any sense to me but <laughs> we're gonna find out aren't we jeez don't tell me they made a mistake in the manual to on the face of it, it certainly sounds like they have. Anyway, maybe a little diagram would be good. Let's do a diagram. Special piece of cardboard ready for this. Okay, so very, very basic. We have a Venturi, which basically is just a narrowing of the carb. So we've got airflow coming in here. We've got a... Th we can use a butterfly. It doesn't matter. Maybe a slide. Okay. Use a butterfly as the, uh, as the throttle. And our vacuum takeoff is here. Okay, and this is the, into the cylinder. So your valve basically is down there. So this is cylinder. So with your airflow coming in, when the throttle is, imagine the throttle's completely closed absolutely shut the engine you know he's going to struggle to run basically um the piston here is you know on the induction stroke the piston's going down and it's going to be sucking big time you're trying to draw air in through here and the throttle's shut so of course it's going to create massive vacuum as the throttle opens more air from the atmosphere atmospheric pressure can get in and that vacuum that's here will go up it'll reduce will the vacuum so when the throttle's fully closed maximum vacuum vacuum throttle fully open 
um, so wide open throttle, we call that WRT, wide open throttle, then there would be essentially just atmospheric pressure here. Um, so what they've said in the manual actually doesn't make sense. Sorry, Honda, but we're going to verify that, aren't we? Okay, so Mr. Honda goes on to say, before synchronizing the carburetors, plural, because you can't synchronize one, can you? Um, with the vacuum gauges, make sure that all the rods are extending at least one thread above the lock nut, figure 20-16. So there you go, look. It's saying we need to make sure that there are at least, what was it, 1.5 millimeters? I don't know what it was. Uh, at least one thread. Okay, well, about one and a half mil. So if it sat below the nut, obviously that's bad because you might do your adjustment and find that you can't fit the lock nut. That's basically what's going on. So make sure that they're all above slightly. Very helpful. It'll save you a lot of grief and having to redo it all later on. If there's insufficient thread extension, the following... Uh, Pre-adjustments must be made before adjusting the synchronization. Turn the throttle stop screw until there is a slight clearance in the stop and the screw. Okay, we don't need to go through that unless we need to. Uh, I can scroll through it now if you want, just so you've got it on the video. Uh, another important one, carburetor air screw adjustment. Um, adjust the respective air screws so that the engine RPM is smoothest with maximum vacuum pressure. The standard adjustment, so a good starting point for these, is uh, three quarters to one and a quarter turns open from the fully closed position. So if you were to set them one full turn from fully closed, um, so you wind them all the way in and then turn them one full turn back out, that's a good starting point if you're doing a, you know, right from scratch. Okay, right, let's go and take a look at the bike, I think now, and see if... We've got enough thread on that protruding uh, rod at the top, number one. That's critical. Okay, you can see I've already, I've already installed the vacuum pipes and stuff. And that is, there we are, that's the port on the carbs where it has to go on. Now, the outer ones are super easy to get to, okay? The inner ones are super hard to get to. I can't even film it. Hang on, where's the camera? There we go. Uh, down there, look. Very, very awkward to get to. Bits of metal in the way, brackets and all sorts of things. So, good luck getting those on. Uh, this is the boot that you've got to remove. You can just push it back like this, it's fine. That is the rod. That is the lock nut. And that is what Honda call an adjusting screw. It's not. It's a big nut. Sorry, Honda. You're wrong. Get your English right. Jeez. I know it's a long time ago, so we've got to, got to cut them some slack, to be fair. Okay. And obviously, there's one of these on the top of every carb. And somebody's done it and put some paint on these. So it's been done a while ago. Some white paint around there as well. Look. Focus. There we go. What's the other side like? So we've got, we've got, we've got plenty of thread. Lots of thread on that one. What's this one like? Here is he. There he is. Yep, plenty of thread on there. Two or three turns. Going around this side. What's under there? Is it going to focus? It is. Yes, we've got enough on that one. And on the outside one, oh, heaps. So we're all good. We don't need to play around with that. Uh, I have already set... The, uh, the idle speed air adjustment screws to one turn out. That's that one there. Oh, golly. The other ones. Jeez, can you see down there? Let's get the torch on. There we go, look. Is that the one? Where is it? It's hiding. Very hard for you guys to see stuff, unfortunately, on these. Can you get down there? Yes, there it is, right by my fingernail. Okay, that's the inner one. And then, obviously, it's the same sort of place on the other two. So, dead easy to get to the outside one. That one there, look. And that one down there, centre of the screen, is the other one. Okay. Well, it's all looking pretty good, isn't it? Now, what does Raytech have to say? Hockley Darkly, right. Well, this is what came in the Raytech kit. 
uh, with the actual tool itself. This is the instructions. So it says here, the following paragraphs describe the gene generic synchronization procedure, which will be applicable to most vehicles. The user should read these in, in conjunction with the vehicle service manual, which we've just done. Some manufacturers specify specific vacuum levels, which again, Honda does. Uh, it says to select the correct nipple size, either M5 or M6. Well, it is the M5 for the Honda. Uh, I've fitted those already, as you've seen, uh, and install them into the manifold's uh, test ports. Apply snub tight torque only. Yeah, don't overcook them. I had to actually machine them down the lathe because the threads were a little bit too long and they were bottoming out. Um, just enough to compress the O-rings that were supplied. In fact, I'll show you the other ones. Hang on. So these are the M6 ones that turned up that I didn't need to use at the moment. You can do it. Oh, you know what? Oh, there we go. <laughs> No time to mess around. Yeah, so the um, this is an M6 thread. The ones that I've used are M5, and they were too long to for the O-ring to properly seat uh, when I fitted them. So I had to chuck them in the lathe, and I think I took them down to about five millimeters in length, and uh, clean them up, make sure there was not a swarf in them, obviously, uh, and then pop them all in. So that's what you get. Uh, obviously Honda's special tool ones, these are actually a lot longer, but it doesn't make any difference. What would be really, really good, Raytech, are you ready for this? I couldn't get a socket on this, right? What would be really useful would be to maybe have an Allen key insert there, because then you could offer it up holding the Allen key, and Allen keys are very slim, and you can get in between the carbs a lot easier and just get it to spin. What I did do, uh, I found worked, is used a bit of pipe on the actual uh, fitting, maybe about a six inch length of pipe, and I could use that to offer it up and turn the pipe to get the thread started. But I wasn't able to get enough torque on the pipe to actually seat the O-ring. I still needed to get a spanner on there, which was almost impossible because there's usually stuff around this area and there's really not a lot of room for a spanner, which you've got to turn, you know, uh, in, a, in a quadrant type movement, whereas something that you can just rotate like an Allen key would be much, much easier to install these things because there's normally a direct line to them because you just had your screwdriver go there, you know? So a slight redesign would be extremely good, um, you know, because even an 8mm socket is just too big to get in on some carburetors. It was a real pain. Um, okay, where do we get to? Right. Uh, right, push the hoses onto the nipples. Take note of which manifold connects to the port on the synchro king. Yes, absolutely imperative. You know, you've got to get use the right pipe uh, and, and actually line up the ports with the tool. Otherwise, you're going to be adjusting the wrong carb and not seeing any difference and messing up another one. Uh, connect the Allen to clips to the vehicle's battery. We're using a remote battery at the moment because uh, it turns out Allen's battery is knackered. It won't even take a charge now. Uh, the device will now come online next week. Calibration. Da, da, da. The display should show up and show. Three little lines, basically zero on all displays. Start the vehicle and then just warm up. Don't pretend to have to do it again because it's gone cold now. Uh, with the throttle fully closed, adjust as necessary the stationary adjuster screw on the carburetor or throttle valve body. So we've done. That's the bit that's out on the uh, in the Honda manual. So I think we're about there. Uh, you can damp down the readings uh, if to stop them jumping around too quickly, so you get a more accurate reading. Um, but yeah. That's basically the instructions. Okay, I'm gonna have a quick break and then we'll make a start. Right, I'm back. I've fitted everything to the bike. Let me show you around, show you the setup, and then we'll crack on and get these carbs synced. Here we go. Okay, remote fuel tank topped up. We've got additional battery, because Alan's is pants. Uh, rigged up, jump leads from Forge, very good quality jump leads by the way, excellent job Jared. And of course the carb electronic synchronization, uh, what's it called, Synchro King 4 Mark II is all set up from Raytech. Uh, I've used a bit of box section, a bit of plates, sort of box section, a bit of angle iron and a bit of plate and some mole grips just to sort of rig up some kind of a a mount for it otherwise it starts dangling around it i think it's a lot better like this uh as regards the plumbing we've got uh cylinder number one is the furthest to the left as you sat on the bike uh that one is plumbed up and that pipe will run round to 
this particular column on the machine and then of course cylinder two cylinder three and cylinder four i have double checked the piping it's really important you get things lined up and you know which one is which because otherwise you'll end up adjusting the wrong carb and expecting to see a movement up here on the respective you know scale and it won't happen you'd be, you'd be busy focused on that and there'll be another one changing over here and you mess the whole thing up all over again you've got to start from scratch Okay, time to start the bike. Ignition is on. Press the fire button. Here we go. Three, two, one. Nice. What a machine. Now, RPMs in the manual should be between 850 and 950. I'm not too concerned at the moment because she's a little bit lumpy. We'll uh, adjust the, uh, the final idle speed once we've done the carb sync. Okay, so at the moment, cylinder one is above range, cylinder two is just in, cylinder three is above, and cylinder four is way out. I need to bring that one right down. So I'm going to start working on cylinder number four first. Bring down the vacuum. 
one, that needs to come down a little bit, so I'll just do that now. turn the large knot clockwise and that's going to raise the throttle up and reduce the vacuum. that works out. Still too high, so I'm going to open that up a bit more. See it's dropping down again now. We're actually on a par with cylinder number four at the moment. I need to go just a little bit further. And we'll have to come back to just cylinder four again. Two eighty-five. 
280. It's really easy to go to overshoot because of the delays in the sampling. So we're pretty much bang on now. Look, 260, 270, 260, 270, 280. So I'm going to lock that one off for now. one here, now it's actually still a little bit low, but this one here is way high, so we're going to bring down number four again now. I told you we'd come back to this one, didn't I? We're just cracking off the lock nut. We need to reduce that, so we're going to bring down, so we're going to raise up the throttle, turn it clockwise. That one's dropped way down. What's going on there? Just gonna bring the revs down again. Something you have to keep doing is adjusting the overall RPM on the main adjustment uh, screw. Otherwise, you'll find you just keep climbing and climbing. Okay, so it's come right down to 270, 260, 240. So we're not doing too badly at the moment. Things are starting to come together. We're a lot closer now than we were. And we need to be under 240 to be within spec. So I'm just going to go... I'll leave that one alone for now, actually. I reckon we're about there with that one. Still too high on one and two again now, so we'll go back over there. Not the easiest thing to do with the camera, to be honest. It's not something you can plan ahead, it's just what it is. So, uh, starting on film before at 250, 240, so we're almost in spec there. Uh, some of the fleet's a little bit high, but that, that'll come down, don't worry. So, one and two, we need to bring those down a bit more. Up a little bit. It sounds, it sounds a bit too low. It says a thousand RPM on the rev counter, but I don't believe it's going. Okay, so I'm going to uh, raise up the throttle on this one by turning the large nut clockwise again. And I'm just doing things in really small movements now. So we're sort of really honing on the fine tuning bit. I want to get sub 300. I'm going to bring the reds down a little bit. As the cards get, get more synchronized, the, uh, the idle gets less lumpy. So you can bring it down there. Okay, we're at 280, 285, 250, 270. Needs to come down a little bit more than that. So we're almost there, like 270, 280. 240, 250. We're getting really, really close now. So I'm going to bring the RPM down overall, a fraction. That one just shot right up again.
running out of fuel. Right, turn it off. We'll give it a minute to cool down and then we'll carry on. We're not far away at all now. Right, let's get it fired up again. We really are very, very close, but we're not quite there. And remember, this bike is nearly 50 years old, so there's a lot of wear and tear on the carburetor linkages and the carburetors themselves. You know, the chances are the sliders are a bit worn, there's a bit of air bypassing around the sliders. So all we can do is get it as good as we possibly can. It may not be perfect. It certainly sounds a lot healthier now. One thing I noticed when I give it a rev is it took a while for the revs to come down. That's an indication of a lean mixture. 
So now it's time to play around with a just technical term, the uh, air bypass screws. Remember those little screws that I set to one turn out just to get them all the same? So I'm now going to just tweak all of those together, um, basically to uh, enrich the mixture slightly and give it better throttle response. So to do that, I'm going to screw the screw clockwise, just quarter of a turn, and we'll see if that uh, see if that helps. I think it probably will. Here we go. Right. I can do this with the engine off. There's no need to have it running. So at the moment we are one full turn out. The spec said standard will be three quarters of a turn out to one and a quarter. So we're just going back to the minimum spec. So we're going to turn it quarter of a turn clockwise. There we go. And I'll do the same for the one that's behind it on card number three. Well, to be fair, I would if I could see what I was doing. I need Torchy. Hang on. There it is. Much better. Right, turn that one. Quarter of a turn. There we go. Right, round the other side. Do the other two. Right, inner one first. This one isn't so bad to get to, actually. Right, quarter of a turn. It's only a guesstimate, you know. It's important to do them all the same. Right. Let's see how that uh, fares. Okay, power on. Here we go. Reading through the Raytex stuff, it says in here, the right wheel, it says, um, after idle balancing has been completed, and I think we really are there now. I think any further tweaking is just going to deviate from you know, the result we've got already. Um, proceed by slowly opening the throttle and allow the engine speed to increase to roughly a third of maximum RPM. Repeat the procedure above for idling, only using the balancing adjuster screws refer to the manual. I'd like to check it. I'm not over keen on actually adjusting it, but we'll see what it comes out at. Here we go. Oh, and also the third engine RPM, third of the, third of the range, it's only a guesstimate because I think that rev count is way off, to be honest. It sounds a little bit lumpy, doesn't it? You know, and the revs just seem a little bit too low. I mean, it's about 900 on the rev counter, so maybe we'll give it a little tweak. Okay, I just want to bring the revs up a little bit. Sticking throttle up there. <laughs> Doesn't do things packed up. Okay, so we're all, you know, they're all much and much, which is really, really good. We've got a bit of a drop on number two cylinder. Might have a play around that later on. 
Now I want to bring the revs up to about a third and we'll see where the, they stay, stay basically within spec. And spec would be within 30 millimeters HG deviation between them. So I just want to see how far they go out compared to each other. Yes, I know, we need a better extractor fan. I've got the garage door on. Uh, not bad. They stayed relatively close to each other, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, so all I'll do is I'll lock off all the lock nuts, and I'll see you back at the bench. So, it's done. A huge thank you to Raytech for sending through this device. Never used one of these before. Very, very impressed. And I'm sure a lot more accurate than using the old mercury tubes. And a lot safer as well, to be fair, because that mercury stuff, it's not, it's not great, is it, to be honest? Um, but no, a new tool for the arsenal. It arrived over a year ago. It's been sat in the cupboard waiting for this very project or stage in the project. Now, just going back to the Honda manual. Remember what Honda said when turning the large nut, they call it a screw, it's not, it's a nut, um, to adjust vacuum on the gauge. They said turning the adjuster screw in the clockwise direction will raise the vacuum pressure. That's not correct. It will raise the throttle slide and the vacuum will drop. We've saw that many, many times whilst I was performing the synchronization. Um, so therefore, um, so turning that screw clockwise raises the throttle, drops the vacuum. If you turn it anti-clockwise, it drops the throttle slide slightly and the vacuum will increase. Sorry, Mr. Honda, you got it wrong this time. Okay, crew, well, I've got a heap more work to get done this bike, but that was the last big job. Very, very pleased it's out of the way, and in all honesty, quite happy with the result of synchronizing those carbs. That's as good as it's gonna get. I could spend hours tinkering away, just making small adjustments and checking again, but it's not doing the old girl any good being sat in the workshop because there's no real flowing air, you know? It's, it's, the oh, little engine's getting pretty hot, even with that fan trying to cool it down. I mean, that, that procedure probably took me about 15 minutes, and that really is enough. Uh, maybe a bit longer. I'll have to look at the footage. Uh, but I did stop halfway through to refuel, and I, I tried to let it cool down sporadically. Anyway, another step in the progress of the CB750K2 project. I've got about 48 hours left before this bike has to be finished. So no pressure there, Andy. Oh, if you enjoyed the video, why not click on subscribe? That way you won't miss out on any new videos. Turn on the notifications. And if I don't get a video uploaded for a couple of weeks, don't panic. There's about 500 archive videos to go and take a look at. Lots of stuff in there uh, to dig around. Uh, you know, you'll find a much younger Andy in there for sure. Uh, also, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. Uh, or you can just email me directly. My email address actually is in the description. And yes, it's me that answers those emails. If I don't get back to you, my apologies. You've either been chucked in the spam folder and I've not found you, or I'm just too busy. I am a very busy chap. Now, if, you want, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon. Or PayPal and again the instructions for that are in the description uh, for all the patrons and PayPalites out there that have supported the channel over the years thank you very much it's much appreciated way too many people to list I'm sorry uh, you know who you are um, for those that still do and those in the future that will thank you again in advance I really really appreciate it it's without your donations we can't do projects like this we just can't it just wouldn't happen Okay, crew, well, until next time, cheers, over and out.
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you.